Hi everyone, welcome back to another video review. Today we're gonna have a look at the Bitfinex Colossus Window White and Venom cases. So what we have here are two cases and the only difference between them is their color scheme. On the White Colossus you have a white pink finish with blue LEDs on the front panel and fans. And on the Venom case there's as you can see a black paint finish and green LEDs on the front panel and fans. Now the Venom is not to be confused with the Black Colossus window because that is a third of the Colossus window cases with a color scheme consisting of a black paint finish and red LEDs in the front panel and fans. For this review I will mainly use the White Colossus though I might point out a few things using the Venom as well. Now as always let's start with some of the general specifications and then the exterior of the case. The Colossus window cases are big size tower cases and they are made out of steel and ABS plastic. And on the exterior you will find that the plastic parts are rubber coated which gives the case a very soft feel. Also the paint finish isn't rough at all and that also gives that very soft feel to it. The overall design of this case is quite unique, I haven't really seen any case like this before besides the original Colossus of course. And the front panel is obviously what defines the overall look on this case. I kind of find it to have an aggressive and monstrous look. Alright, so this case has a door of course and the door is held into place with magnets. After opening the door we can find the power LED and hard drive activity LED, 5 5 quarter inch drive bay covers, ventilation for the front 230mm LED intake fan to intake cool air and on the bottom of the door we can find more ventilation to intake cool air when the door is closed. Now if you're wondering where the power button and all the other front panel stuff is, well that can be found here on the top panel. So here you can find the power button, reset button, a switch to turn on or off the LEDs, let me show, so we have the LEDs here, you can turn them on or off, well that was actually off or on, and then you have one, two, three, four USB 2 ports, an eSATA port, and a microphone and audio jack. I don't really get why they only include USB 2 ports though and no USB 3 ports because the original Colossus had them and I find this a bit unfortunate since many people these days do want to have those new USB 3 ports on their front I.O. But anyway, let's continue by having a look at these grooves that Bitfinex included and this is actually a very innovative ID to route cables around the front panel. Actually, let me demonstrate this. So, I'm going to take a cable here and I'm gonna plug this into let's see the uh, USB USB port right here and then I can actually route that like that and this is really not that healthy though this is something I have to say uh, not every cable can actually take this corner because otherwise you're damaging your cable severely like this one anyway you can actually route them like that all the way to the bottom if you want to so let me do that really quick and then on the bottom here if we close the door yeah. normally we should be able to close the door yeah perfectly now you can also of course not only go to the bottom but you can let it go out of the side of the side panel uh, of the front panel sorry like here, and then you can oh, we can actually close the front panel, and then it comes out of the side here. But this isn't just very innovative; this also just looks nice. Now there are two flaws that I kind of think that are flaws. Um, as I mentioned before, the corner here, and you're limited in amount of amount of cables that you can actually route through the grooves. Um, let's say about two cables for each side and that would be it. Moving on with the rest of the front panel you can take it off just by pulling very hard but gentle and when that is off you can clean the dust filter, get to the fan screws and easily take off the drive bay covers which have a dust filter in them. Oh and by the way I measured it and there only seems to be half a centimeter of space between the uh, five and a quarter inch drive bay covers um, or whatever you'll put in that and the door so installing fan controllers like these won't be an option. On the left side panel there is a big dark and very stylish window you can install two 120 millimeter fans but unfortunately there are no dust filters included for those fans. 
and the other side panel has been left plain. Then the top panel has besides the I.O. compartment a lot of mesh and underneath that another big 230mm LED fan. You can replace that fan by two 120mm or two 140mm fans or an internal 240mm radiator if I saw that correctly. To do so you'll have to take off the top panel and that will just require you to screw out these two screws here and here and then slide it backwards and take it off. On the back of the case we can find four grommeted holes for water cooling tubes to go through, a spot to install an optional 120 or 140 mm fan, the opening for your motherboard's I.O. shield, eight expansion slots, and on the bottom you can install your ATX power supply. And to finish the exterior of the case, on the very bottom of it, we have four HDPC style feet with rubber on them, ventilation holes for the optional 120 or 140 mm bottom intake fan, and the removable dust filter for your power supplies intake fan. Now let's take a look at the inside of the case. The inside of the white Colossus is all painted white except for a few plastic parts that are black. Though in the Venom and Black Colossus cases everything is just black. In the back of the case there is again the space where you install your optional rear fan and underneath that is the tool designed for the expansion slot covers. And this tool design makes it very easy to install cards. Then on the bottom of the case there are four rubber feet for your power supply to rest on as well as a dust filter for the bottom optional 120 or 140 millimeter fan though the dust filter can only be installed back on the 140 millimeter fan. On the motherboard tray you'll find a big hole for the CPU cooler's retention plate, lots of cable management holes which are grommeted but the bottom cable management hole probably should have been a bit bigger. Also note the many punch outs to attach cables to on the back of the motherboard tray and you also find the LED control station there. So this is where all the cables from the fans, front panel and LED on off switch come together so that you're able to turn them either on or off. Also the motherboard tray supports standard ATX, micro ATX, flex ATX, SSI CEB and SSI EEB motherboards. Now moving on with the drive base, these are the 5 5 quarter inch drive base which are toolless on both sides. And to secure a device in place, all you'd have to do is push in and slide this button on both sides. They also include this 5.25 inch to 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch drive bay adapter, on which you can also screw another 140mm fan. Of course, a 5.25 inch to 3.5 inch drive bay cover is included as well. These are the 7 3.5 inch hard drive cages, which are toolless, and the installation of a hard drive is very easy. You should watch out that these metal pieces don't come out though. And also note the anti-vibration rubbers on the toolless hard drive cages. And oh yeah, you can also install 2.5 inch drives on these hard drive cages. And uh, also if you don't like to just slide these in, you can always secure each of these with a screw on the side here. And to finish, what they also include are these zip ties, this motherboard speaker, these cable holders which are very useful, all the screws which are painted black, and these keys which are used to lock the top compartment on the top panel. Okay, so as you can see, I've built my computer into the Venom case. Um, building my system into this case was a very easy job because there was lots of room to work, though some things aren't quite what they should be like. As I probably mentioned earlier, the bottom cable management hole isn't very big, so pulling cables through isn't all that easy. Fortunately, the rubber grommets are all firmly in place, so they don't come out that easy. Another thing are the cables of the LEDs, if we have a look at the back of the motherboard tray, you can see that they make a really big mess and it does take a while until you have them tucked away nicely so you can continue doing a neat cable management job. Also because this is a big size tower case, there is a big chance you're gonna need a few extension cables if you're gonna want to route all your cables around the back of your motherboard tray and this will be the case with some power supplies that have shorter cables than others. Also the... Um, tools designed for the drive base wasn't uh, yeah it doesn't really very uh, smooth I should call it uh, it's pretty hard to push in and slide and yeah it's not that comfortable also the hard drive cages are kind of not worked out correctly because if you put the hard drive in the metal, that metal piece that I showed you earlier in the video comes out so uh, that's some stuff Bitfinex has to look into but uh, overall uh, this was a good case, an easy work case to work with. There's plenty of space behind the motherboard tray for cable management and the biggest part of installation is tools. 
Also this case has removable dust filters, it has a brilliant design, many innovative features like the top compartment and the external cable management, a very nice and big window, though the optional fans that can be installed in them should have been given some dust filters. Also the fans give an acceptable amount of airflow, but they're pretty loud for the amount of airflow that they produce, just listen. Also they should have kept at least two USB 3 ports on the front panel. Uh, also the power LED is very bright and sometimes you have the feeling that everything in this case is still very cheap. This is normal though, since this is basically the first or one of the first cases Bitfinex has designed and made ever. But what they've actually done is actually took all their potential and put that into one big design and came up with this. And actually, yeah, it's, it's very innovative overall and they deserve an awesome award for this case. Thanks for watching this video review, be sure to rate and subscribe or comment if you have a question, you can always also email me at the given email address. Also thanks to BitPhoenix for sponsoring us with these cases and to Case King for sending them to us. And I hope to see you all in the next video.